the Clemson Dubcast. You know, something we did earlier uh, this spring and summer at TigerIllustrate.com is the Clemson 30 series in which we sought out 30 prominent former football players from different eras and asked them all the same three questions. What are you doing nowadays? What are you up to? Number two, thoughts on the state of the football program with Dabo Sweeney and how far he's taken it. And number three, the big question nowadays, the opinion on the current landscape of college athletics with name, image, likeness, and the transfer portal, such dominant issues. Figured it'd be a fun summer project to go back and present some of the audio from those interviews. So this will be part one of, I think, two parts is what we're planning. But if you want to go read the series in its entirety, the Clemson 30 series, Sign up to TigerIllustrate.com. A wealth of cool stuff from that series, which went for about, I guess, a month and a half. Not to mention all the great insight and intel you get on the recruiting front from our Paul Strilo, who does a fantastic job. Check it out at TigerIllustrate.com. My good friends Blake Smith and Brooke Archenhold have been part of the podcast since the beginning, way back in August of 2018. They have an accomplished team of personal injury attorneys at Parm Smith and Archenhold based in Greenville. They are Clemson people, and their skillful attorneys have decades of experience in complicated litigation matters, taking a special interest in medical malpractice, nursing home abuse, and neglect car accident cases that have left the individuals involved in serious trouble. For a free consultation at Parm Smith and Archenhold, call 864 990 or online at parhamlaw.com. That's P-A-R-H-A-M law.com. Solero Communications, formerly known as Tandem Payment, is a full-service integrated electronic payments provider powered by leading-edge technology. Solero provides a wide array of merchant solutions, simplified payments. They make onboarding, taking payments, maintaining risk management and compliance, and getting support quick and easy. At Solero, they're all about helping you achieve sustainable growth as a business. Taking payments isn't the only thing your business needs. With Solero's solutions, you can manage inventory, sell products and services via social media, schedule staff, track sales, get reports, and much, much more. Find out more about Solero at solerocommerce.com. That's C-E-L-E-R-O commerce.com. Want to share a quick word about Founders Federal Credit Union? If you've been to a sporting event in Clemson, you've probably heard about Founders already. They are the official credit union partner of the Clemson Tigers. In addition to that, all Clemson faculty staff and students are eligible for membership as well as IPTA members. Matt Gross is a proud Clemson alum and the vice president for the Clemson market for Founders Federal Credit Union. Matt's office is located beside the Walmart neighborhood market on Old Greenville Highway in Clemson. For more information, go to foundersfcu.com. Okay, six former Clemson football players on deck for this podcast. Actually, we're starting with Jeff Francoeur, and he... (laughs) He never was a Clemson football player, but would have come here if not for baseball and is absolutely in love with the Clemson football program, has a close relationship with Debo Sweeney. Without further ado, we start it with Jeff Francoeur. Here we go. Well, I'm pretty much talking about how I uh, used to try to play baseball. Um, you know, I, I'm loving what I'm doing. I'm getting a chance to do... You know, the Braves for Valley Sports, which is a blast because I grew up here. I live here. But it's also pretty cool because I'm getting a chance to do TBS. I'm going to do 10 Tuesday night games in the AL playoffs this year. And, you know, that's always just a great time because, it, you know, it's as close as – I like to tell people it's as close as you can really get to the adrenaline feel of when you played, you know, when you call a playoff game. I mean, because the atmosphere, the fans – uh, you know, it's incredible, but you know, I, I, man, I'm, I'm lucky. I get to do it at home and, you know, I only do like about a hundred games. So it's so nice. Cause I get to coach my kids. We go to the beach during the summer. So as I say, I, I get to stay involved a lot, which is great. Um, but I also get, you know, time off too, which is fantastic. How old are your kids? Uh, eight, six, three, and one. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm uh I'm full board, man. That's <laughs> a handful. Yeah. Um, number two, uh, what are your thoughts on the Clemson program and how far Dabo's taken it, just sort of the, the state of the program? It's awesome, man. You know, it's so funny going back to when I, you know, got to know Dabo kind of first and it, it's amazing to see where, you know, he's taken this program and, and quite frankly continues to take it because, you know, look in a day and age of, you know, 
transfer por- portals and, and, you know, all this stuff, you know, it's a different age, man, with social media and everything to keep going, um, you know, to, to keep yourself at the highest level, you know, it's not easy. And, and, you know, tip your hat to Dabo for, for being able to do that. Um, I think it's pretty incredible. Um, and I guess that sort of leads into the third question, which is what is your your take on the state of college, like sort of the landscape right now? Things are changing really fast with with the portal and name image likeness and all that. You know, man, I, it's so crazy because I go back and forth on this. I really do. Because just like baseball, I'm a very old school type guy. You know, I, I love the purity of the game. And I will tell you, I do sometimes feel like you know, these college athletes, man, are asked to do a lot. And, you know, for them to even, to, you know, I don't love the idea that they're being able to kind of free agent themselves, really. But I do wish that they were taken care of more. And what I mean by that is more of a financial basis. You know, they want to take their girlfriend or, you know, take a trip during the summer. You want to run a camp, you know, and make money. Why can't you? You know, it's especially with all the money that the schools are making off them. So, you know, it's it's a it's a slippery slope because, you know, unfortunately, you know, and I've read some of Dabo's comments, but like when once you go down this, man, it's hard to go back. And, you know, one kind of wormhole opens up another. So, you know, there's areas I like areas I don't. You know, I, I think that unfortunately, Maybe not in all the other sports, but in football, conferences soon are going to be, you know, now that you got Oklahoma and Texas coming into the SEC, um, you know, it's it's about the mighty dollar. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's tough because, you know, everybody wants a seat at the table. But I, I, I'll say this. I love when the college football playoffs four teams because I think year in and year out, you, you see that there's only four teams, and a lot of times, really only three teams that are worthy of winning a title, you know? And, you know, how many how many semifinal games do we see that are just blowouts? Yeah. You know, I mean, look at look at Georgia with Michigan this year, and then Alabama with Cincy. You know, I mean, those two dominating games. And not saying that that's not good, because it is to other teams get involved, but, you know, there's only a handful of teams to me that truly – can play for a national championship. Um, you're, that's what I think Dabble's done a great job. What I love that he's done, Larry, is, you know, when he got there, and I remember I was out in Glendale at that first national championship, and I remember when Alabama came out on the field, and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and you saw the sheer size of those guys <laughs> on the offense and defensive line, and to me, the difference now why Clemson competes with all those teams and does it is because Dabo closed the gap on that, man. You know, Clemson walks onto a football field now, they got that size. And, you know, it's not, you know, all or nothing. So I think that, that's been a great thing. To- so on the portal and, and, and NIL, you're just sort of, you're mixed on it, I guess. I am, you know, like the portal thing for me, I don't love, you know, you you go somewhere and you don't get to play your first year. You just transfer. That's fine, but then you should have to. To me, there's consequences for your decision. And you know, now these kids are just taking. It's like free agency, and that's why I don't like it. It's become the wild, wild west. Now, I have no issue when you had guys like Jalen Hurts. You know, guys that spent um, what's his name at Clemson, Chase. Chase Bryce. Yeah. He, he didn't leave Clemson because he was on, hey, he just wasn't going to play. You know? And so he wanted to go somewhere where he had an opportunity, but he put his, you know, three, four years in at Clemson. So I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay is like, you know, when Justin Fields came into Georgia and one year, you know, you don't play and now, boom, I can go straight and be the quarterback at Ohio State. <laughs> you know, because like I said, at the end of the day, you know, and, and so for me, as an old school guy, I appreciate the way Dabo's done it. And I know some people don't, and I know a lot of people are, you know, he's got to get up with the times and realize, you know, that this is the way it is. And to a certain extent, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to it. 
But at the same time, you know, there's something to be said for coming into a school, knowing you're going to be there for, you know, four or five years and be a part of the program. Not just, I'm coming in for one year, going to light it up, and then I'm out. And for a lot of those guys, let's be honest, not even one year. It's what, six months? Yeah. And that's why I said that's too close to pro sports for me. Okay, shifting to Dalton Freeman, offensive lineman for the Tigers from 2009 to 2012. Yeah, so I work with HMR Veterans Services, and our corporate office is based out of Anderson, South Carolina, which is where I work. And we have the honor of operating state veterans nursing homes. So I'm in long-term care, uh, mainly on the operations and employee side of things, not the clinical side. <clears throat> but I interned with this company while I was at Clemson and have been, technically I've been an employee of theirs for about 10 years. So even when I was in the NFL, I would come back and work on a few projects with them in the off season. Um, and then I would return. And uh, But when I was transitioning out of the NFL, they gave me an opportunity to come back and work with them. And I accepted, and I've been very, very happy. It's an extremely rewarding career to serve those who served us. And uh, just, just really enjoyed uh, what I'm doing. And, and I'll never say never to athletics. My dad was in athletics his dad was in athletics i've grown up around it and that's all i've ever really known but i've thoroughly enjoyed you know getting away from it a little bit and and seeing what else is out there getting outside of my comfort zone learning a new business and uh, as i said there's nothing more rewarding than taking care of veterans so we just welcomed our son right before christmas in december so uh, my wife and I will be married eight years in five days. Uh, so March 29th is our eight-year anniversary. Our daughter turned three in October, so she's almost three and a half, and, um, and our son is, is about three months old. So three-year-old, three-month-old, and the wife of eight years. We're very, very blessed. I'm extremely proud of Clemson and, and what Clemson stands for, first and foremost. I try to tell people all the time, it's not about the X's and O's. There's the, there's the old saying, it's not about the X's and O's, it's about the Jimmies and Joes. And I truly believe Clemson has had the success they've had because Coach Sweeney cares more about the people than he does the players. You know, he cares more about that person inside the jersey than the number on that jersey. And he has truly built that program from inside out. And you you continue to see record year after year, semester after semester, academically. You look at what they've been able to do in the Paul journey, developing these young uh, really boys, they think they're men, but you're turning these boys, these young men, into great men who are going to be good fathers and good husbands and good leaders out in the community. And all the other stuff takes care of itself because we're recruiting high-character guys that know how to play football. And then I think our, our coaching staff does a tremendous job of developing the talent because we've never – had a number one recruiting class, but we've won two national championships within the past few years. Um, so the development side from a person and as an athlete is just outstanding. And I think that's because Sweeney serves their hearts, not their talents. Again, I'm not 100% opposed to the portal, but I think there's some eye-opening stats out there that show that there are kids that decide to, they're going to enter the portal and then never get picked up or never end up going anywhere. The grass is not always greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. And I just struggle with the kind of, you, you get a little bit unhappy or your feelings get hurt and you just decide you're going to transfer. I like the old way, and I'm not saying it needs to be exactly the old way of you have to graduate in order to be able to transfer immediately. And if not, you have to sit out a year. 
But I do think there could be a few tweaks. I think that was a good model, and I think they could go back to something similar to that, and it would really help not only the programs and the recruiting and how you plan and, you know, kind of how you operate as a, as a football team, but I think it would also help the kids uh, because, again, if they just get a little bit unhappy – you know, they can hit the easy button and leave. And I just disagree with that. I think you need to stick it out. I think you need to earn it. And and I think that teaches you a lot about life and self-discipline. And um, I think it also is just it's hard for certain programs to be able to plan and know how many kids to recruit. And, you know, maybe this kid was on the bubble in high school of getting an offer or not, and they decided not to offer him because of a transfer portal, you know. So it doesn't only hurt the players at the college level. I think it's going to hurt um, high school recruiting as well. Now to Ty Hill, cornerback, who played for Clemson from 02 to 05. And also, please pardon the music in the background. I was sitting outside of a softball game, uh, Clemson softball game, as they were going through pregame warm-ups. I was waiting on uh, Clemson's football practice to end as I uh, conducted this interview. All right, here we go. Because I just got out of a, a, a real role, which is, uh, you know, my son's football team. But my daughter is a part of it. And my son, this is his last year in any all youth sports. You know, like, he's going to ninth grade next year. So, you know, the clock starts on him uh, yeah. in, in, in real sport. You know what I mean? And my daughter, she's still, she's still going to be, uh, she'll be 10 this year. Well, next month, and so she got a long ways to go yet. She's only in fourth grade, so I'll be out there. I guess I'll be out there trying to help them along, help her along the way. Since you know, of course, I coach my son all the way through, so you know, yeah, <laughs> she's gonna feel a certain type of way if I don't be out there with her. So <laughs> that's great. That's great, man. Yeah, man. So then a little bit, just keeping me a little bit. Well, I'm, I'm still in. Um, I'm in Lawrenceville, Georgia, Gwinnett County. Um, uh, not too far from Clemson. Um, right now, I'm actually transitioning myself. I trying to figure out what I want to do as far as um, I've been doing. I've been doing some contract work, you know. I've been doing some consulting, um, but uh, and also been coaching, coaching sport, coaching football, and now coaching track. So, kind of give me a new perspective on like what I, you know, do I want to do it. For real, you know what I mean. Like yeah. Coaching on a coaching on a collegiate level or coaching in high school, that's something else I've been thinking about lately. Um, also, been uh, about to get my insurance license as well. <laughs> you know, so uh, so yeah, I've been kind of all over the place. I've been you know trying to figure out. You know, I'll be forty this year, so you know it's kind of like you know what I'm gonna do now. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's been um, interesting to say the least, you know, because, uh, you know, trying to uh, navigate what you want to do. And there's been a few things that I have been offered, but I haven't, you know, pulled the trigger on. And so, yeah, uh, the biggest part for me right now is that my kids, I want my kids are getting to that age, uh, you know, where, like I said, my son is, he's going to high school next year, so we need to be settled and grounded you know, where we're going to be. and We've been here, I've been living here in, in Gwinnett now, well, Lawrenceville, uh, we're going on like 13 years. So this is the home, you know, we kind of grew, built a little uh, village around my kids as far as their football teams and, and the community and the track, the track um, club that we're a part of. So it's been, um, but yeah, those the navigating those things, but also, you know, figuring out what I want to do as well. So, you know, and they behind me 100% whatever I choose. Yeah, I used to own, yeah, I was a franchisee for Golden Corral for, for 10 years, for 10, 10, yeah, 10, 11 years. Uh, I, I've got out of that, you know, um, not doing that anymore. Well, what they've become is they've, they've become a giant in the landscape of college football. You know, uh, they, they are more relevant Ever, you know, I mean, they start, their brand power is high. Uh, and um, I think, I think uh, Dabble did a great job of building that program, 
you know, uh, the way he wanted to build it from the vision that he had from day one. So I think he's done a great job. Um, where we at currently, I think, I mean, we're still in the mix, you know? Yeah. Um, we're still in the mix. I think he's still, still doing a great job of recruiting. Yes, I know we had uh, some coaches leave, you know, uh, with Tony Elliott and, and, ben, and Venables and some of the other coaches that was on the staff that they took with them. Uh, but, I mean, I think Clemson's going to still remain remain Clemson. You know, I don't think nothing's going to change. Um, I think uh, a lot of people going to get more opportunities to play. I think they've been doing a great job of playing a lot of kids. Um, so I think this year is going to be a, a, a different year. I think it's going to be uh, – I'm anxious to see how, how – uh, I think shake out at the quarterback position. I tell you that, <laughs> you know. I, I think uh, I think that was really if everything was you know different. I believe I believe if we had more competition at the quarterback position last year, I believe it, it would have been a different season for Clemson. You know, I, I think their defense was top notch. You know, but when you keep them out there that long, you know, you kind of. You know, you you prone to injuries, and that, that that's what kind of warm us as the season went. Um, I think DJ is going to be better ne- next year, this year coming up, because I believe he's more motivated. I know we got a uh, another five star quarterback that just came in, so I know he's going to be he's going to be there to push him. You know, and I mean, for as all the other skill positions, I mean, all the other positions, I think we I know our old line which they were talking about last year, but I believe. You know, I believe they're going to be better. You know, it's crazy to say that, you know, uh, it's like how spoiled we've become as Clemson. We, we mad about a 10-win season, and we're not, we're not in the college football playoff. You know, that's it's become a norm, but that's also the testament to, like, how uh, the great job that Dabo has, Dabo has done over the years and, and what he's built. And I believe he's built, I believe he's, he's built to win, he's built to sustain, and, um, I don't see, I don't see, I don't see that changing. I think he's still going to be able to recruit at a high level. Like I said, I believe. Like I know this year, uh, with the with the coaching that left, I believe, uh, you know, that yeah, that, that, that kind of hurt recruiting a little bit. But I mean, they still was able to fill the class with with guys. I know that they see that who they envision can can be who Dabo who Dabo pretty ultimately recruits. So. I think it's going to be interesting. I think I think we're going to be right back in the mix. Well, with that portal, it's kind of it's crazy, man, because it's like once you get them there, you don't want to have to keep recruiting them. You know, I think you know life is going life is hard, right? You know, it's you know that's the beauty thing, the beautiful thing about sport, man. It teaches you how to, to be resilient and 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 stick through certain things. I know in certain situations, there are certain certain people that have to move, you know, because you know they got somebody in front of them that it's probably they not going to beat out. But, you know, I think I think it changes the game. You know, I, like I think I seen uh, something online with, where uh, Nick Saban said, if, if if you are a high school kid and you done went to three, four different high schools in your high school career, I don't want you. You know, because you want, you want people to, you know, that's going to be able to stick it out. But again, I know everybody's situation is completely different. You know, so in certain situations, I guess it could be good. You know, that's not the era I come from. You know, <laughs> like I, you know, if you if you went, if you had to, you was gonna leave. You had to sit out a year and then had to fight your way on the field wherever else you go. Um, but I, I mean, that's the new landscape now. You know, uh, you know, I think wasn't it something like over? It was a lot of kids in the portal this year. Was it like over a thousand or something like that? So what what, what do you do? You know, like, do you not go back to that school that you left? And that, that school where you leave and they count scholarships. So they bring in someone to take that scholarship that you forfeited. So I don't know, man. I think I think everybody's got to be careful. I think it's worked out for certain certain guys. But, you know, I don't know for if you did a survey on the whole, like, how many people has it worked out for, you know? I, 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 don't, I don't really know. I, it's it's, it's kind of crazy to me. And it puts the name in likeness, man. It's like the new, it's the wild, wild west. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even, Jesus. It's like, you know, it's already a great, great blessing to get a full scholarship. But, you know, now, you know, these kids are getting everything now. You know, they, they're getting stipends monthly. They're getting, 
you know, they, they're getting scholarships, buddy, you know. Uh, it, it, it's, it's really like hitting the lottery. It's really like hitting the lottery. It's just, and then on top of then you add on top of that, the likeness deal that you can get. You know, I mean, I'm all for everybody to get paid, you know, but, I, you know, it's kind of interesting that, uh, you know, you can become a millionaire in college playing, you can play college football now. You know, I think that's what uh, Bryce Young, I believe they said he was like over a million dollars. Oh, yeah. And NIL deals as a, as a, as a, before he even started before. the game in Alabama. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, it's crazy. It's crazy, but. I, I'm all for it. I'm all for everybody getting in here. I just, I hope it don't derail, make people be too complacent, you know, and not work for the ultimate goal. And I think uh, if you, you come to school, I mean, of course, you know, number one deal, number one thing is, you know, you want to, you want to get a, you know, you want to graduate with a degree or, you know, put yourself on track to be able to get it. Some people may be lucky enough to leave in three. I know a lot of people are able to graduate in three, but for the ones that don't graduate in three and, you know, but to have the opportunity to go to the NFL early, you know, uh, you know, that's great. You know, I mean, but they still on track to to get their degree. I mean, that's the number one thing I think for me. Um, number two is that the second thing is that hey, if the cherry on top is being able to go to the NFL. You know what I mean? So don't don't uh don't you know don't I hope you don't get too complacent with some of these NIL deals that you know it kind of. Be, you know, distracts you or, you know, uh, from 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 the ultimate goal. So, but I think it's good. I mean, I think it's good. It just it's different. You know, everything's different now. <laughs> so, you know, I'm all for I'm all for everybody to be able to you know um, benefit off their name and like you know their name and likeness. You know, so I don't have a problem with it. I just I think it's I think it's really subject to each person. It's not you can stay remain level headed and not think about it. And, you know, continue to take care, take care of your business. I think it's hey, more power to you. But uh, but yeah, it, it, it's like I said, it's it's all new. It's all new to me. It's, you know, and then definitely, you know, the era that we come in. I'm like, man, everything good. Yeah, I can say everything good, but you know, everything gets better with time, right? You know, everything is different now, and it's, I mean, in a good way. You know, as far as you know, being able to benefit off your, your off your image, you know, your name and likeness. But you know, uh, so yeah, man. It's slip, I think it's a slippery slope, but I think it's uh, I think it could be good, and I think it could be bad. You know, I just but I'm I'm all for everybody. You know, getting what they deserve. <laughs> you know. And now for Willie Simmons, shotgun Willie Simmons played for for Clemson from 2000 to 02, is now the head coach at Florida A&M University. Yeah, you know, just uh, uh, preparing for another another season here at, at FAMU. Um, you know, finished spring practice uh, a couple weeks ago, and I'm uh, now just in the process of closing out this semester with exit meetings and preparing for recruiting, and obviously the nonstop life of a head football coach, you know, at this level. So um, you know, just excited about the opportunity to, to lead young men at such a prestigious institution. And um, you know, looking forward to what the future holds. My wife, Shaya, um, you know, wife of, of eight years now. Um, you know, six kids between the two of us. Um, oldest is uh, in law school, you know, in here at Family's Law School down in Orlando. And two teenage girls and, um, you know, three Great, well, two grade school kids, a seven-year-old daughter, five-year-old son, and then uh, the, the two-year-old little girl to close us out. You know, it's a big family, and uh, but you know, both local products, both from this area. So um, she's a she's a graduate, two-time graduate of FAMU, um, in her PhD program here now to to get a doctoral degree from here. So you know, just great to be back with with you know. Uh, where our roots are here in Gadsden County and Leon County, um, you know, as a place that embraces us, you know, as their own. Man, we, I mean, we're all um, just over the moon about the direction of the program, where it's come from. Um, of course, a lot of us feel like we kind of laid the foundation, you know, back in the early 2000s of um, but what that expectation is to be a Clemson Tiger. And uh, obviously he's taking that and taking it even to the next level. 
you know, uh, there's national uh, champion contenders and you know, guys and, and a team that's always in the conversation. And so just excited, <clears throat> excited to see, um, you know, where, they, where, where, where they've come. Um, obviously, you know, <clears throat> probably the most adversity they've faced um, in a while, you know, losing both coordinators and, um, you know, coming off their first non-playoff uh, burst in a while, you know, so again, just seeing kind of where, you know, what's next for them, but because all the confidence in the world and Dabo and its ability to lead that program and again, excited to see what this season holds for them. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a major shift, obviously, in, in the college football landscape. Um, the player empowerment movement has really taken off, and um, there, there are a ton of benefits to that. You know, I think it's long been past due time for players to to benefit um, from their name, image, and likeness, and, um, you know, the ability to generate significant revenue, um, you know, for that is it, something that, again, is, is – probably been overdue um but just like anything else uh, i do think there needs to be some consistent regulation with it um, because if not then obviously you can't control um the narrative it's though they can't control what happens uh and when you leave it up to in institutions or conferences but something this big and significant um i, I think it could possibly be a recipe for disaster so i'm all for name image and likeness um, I'm all for the transfer portal, you know, but I do think there needs to be some type of uh, uniformity across the board uh, in, in the form of certain regulations that need to be put in place to just ensure that you know, everyone is, is using safe practices and that we're really keeping the, the student athlete, um, the well-being of the student athlete at the forefront of the conversation. And if, and if we don't, um, they'll be the ones that lose out in the end. The student athletes will be the ones that lose out in the end and not the ones that get the deals, um, or the ones that transfer, you know, from Power 5 to Power 5 and, and, and make All-American and, and become pros, but it'll be the ones who don't get the deals and the ones who transfer and don't find a place to go and, <clears throat> and now they don't have a college degree at all. You know, so again, thinking more about the the, the majority, um, which are the ones that, <laughs> that, that we don't talk about as much, um, they'll be the ones I think that will ultimately suffer if we don't put some type of regulation on this thing sooner rather than later. When you're ready for a complete renovation in your home or business, open the door to more with Harris Home and Harris Commercial. Their local experience team will totally transform any room space from beautiful floor coverings to construction to finished details. Harris handles every step of your renovation process, whether it's a kitchen or living room or an industrial or educational setting, like some of the positively stunning work they've done at Clemson University. Go to discoverharris.com and experience a total renovation transformation from Harris Home and Harris Commercial. If you're in the eastern Midlands and PD area, and you're in any way interested in buying and selling a home, commercial property, land, need to consider reaching out to Uptown Realty. They're based out of Sumter and run by a friend of mine, Patrick Enzer, big Clemson guy, used to cover the Tigers in a newspaper capacity, longtime supporter of Tiger Illustrated, longtime listener to the Dubcast. The home buying process should be an enjoyable experience, so let Patrick and his staff do all the heavy lifting. All you got to do is pick up the phone and call 803 774 0435 or go to Uptown Realty SC. Dot com. Another loyal supporter of the Dubcast is Blackacre Law Firm in Greenville, a subsidiary of Parm Smith and Archenthal. Blackacre helps South Carolina residents achieve their dreams of home ownership by providing experienced, professional representation for real estate closings. Attention to detail is crucial in real estate law. Blackacre is committed to making sure nothing gets by them preparing residential or commercial closings. Blackacre also offers estate planning services for their clients in the Greenville area. Find out more about Blackacre at 864-326-3500. Now to Aries Curry, former receiver and track athlete at Clemson from 2001 to 2004. I'm back in Columbia. I don't know what was the last time we spoke. I might have been in Spartanburg or whatnot, but I'm back in Columbia area uh, working. The wife and I, we have a, a private medical clinic that we just opened up last Monday. So today marks the start of our second week of doing this. So. <clears throat> I used to sit and work for front desk, kind of like the business manager, and handle the marketing, social media posts, things of that nature, just helping that be successful, as well as still doing the sports performance, sports performance training, along with uh, 
just rebranding and just changing the business model of our truck that we acquired last year. We have a, a commercial vehicle that I was using. I was doing some over the road hauling with it, but revamping that business model, I'm just going to focus on just moving furniture. Uh, so people just take care of their moving needs with that. And right now, uh, I think just based off what I've seen over the years, uh, I think we're still where we need to be. Just uh, getting back to where, uh, just making sure we're strong on that offensive line layer. Uh, just based off my experience, uh, just the mm-hmm. experience I've seen over the years. So, like, but what I have going on, I have been able to be as hands-on and just pay as much attention to this. And my focus has been focusing on making sure it's easy getting off the ground and running and stuff. But that's the main thing. We're still getting the big recruits. Um, I think we've lacked over the, at least the past couple of seasons. I think it showed uh, on our line, our offensive line, as far as our protection scheme. But um, for us to be able to get a quarterback like a DJ somewhere, you know, you're getting – top recruits out of other people's states that the offensive line needs to match that too you don't see uh you don't see no drop off in bama's line as it is so i think that would be us going to the next level with our program just our offensive line consistently reloading as opposed to rebuilding you know because we've had those as good as we as good as coach swing is taking and taking our program to the heights that we've gone We've still had those those years, even with those successful seasons where we're in the postseason top four, where our offensive line was kind of up and down type deal. But we just had the athletes surrounding us where in the quarterback, we would be able to get it done. And, and of course, on the defensive side of the ball, we had some dogs on that defensive side of the ball. So I would just like to see us more consistently getting those big-time recruits on the offensive line. I mean, it's crazy that this is come full circle like when I got there my freshman year later because I actually wrote a paper <laughs> on players being compensated for their image and likeness as far as it was more so along the stipend deal at that particular time period because I know there was some mention about the Nebraska football program some came up about players receiving stipends you know just because you know as, you, as well as you know you don't have time to work I mean I worked I worked a little bit while I was there at Clemson uh, over the summer was a manual labor job, but that was really about it. I, I only did it because I was still up there running track, but I, I felt like that was long overdue. Uh, athletes, student athletes, being able to be compensated for their uh, for their work, you know, um, based off their productive productivity and what they brought to the program as far as helping that program out. Now the the portal deal that's a whole another beast, and it's <laughs> I, I haven't paid too much attention to that, but. I guess I'm 50 50 on that from what I have paid attention to, Larry, because now you just created uh, an avenue for, I guess, in this generation of athletes is different anyway, as far as, oh, it's too tough. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a go somewhere else, as opposed to, you know, I'm going to stick around and I'm going to get better. And I can understand in a sense that if I feel like I'm good enough to play my freshman year, I want to play my freshman year. So I'll decide I'm going to leave. I can understand from that perspective. But it's one of them things like uh, somebody's salty or whether they feel like a coach doesn't like them because in hindsight, they're not doing what they need to do on and off the field. Now I'm just going to leave. Yeah, I, I don't think that's I think that's kind of lame. And we'll give the last word of this podcast to our friend Billy Davis, a very frequent visitor and contributor to the TigerIllustrated.com message boards. We really appreciate that. Also appreciate his service to our country for many, many years. Billy has some strong opinions on where things are as far as NIL and the portal go. So without further ado, here we go. I'm the director of executive and major event security for Samaritan's Purse and the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. What that boils down to is I do personal security for Franklin Graham and his family. So travel all over the world in support of the Samaritan's Purse mission. Yeah, we just got back from Ukraine. We did two two trips over there. Uh, We have a field hospital in Lviv and clinics throughout the country. And so I set up logistics and security for those trips, you know, whether it's uh, in the United States or overseas. And, um, My background, you know, 27 years in the Secret Service, uh, you know, head of the Vice President's Division, um, 
I was a counterterrorism guy in the Secret Service for almost 10 years. So my background in the Secret Service, and then when I worked for the CIA for a year, served me well to carry out that mission, you know, whether it's in the United States or, or worldwide. So I um, have two daughters, 20 and 25, been married 32 years to my wife, Kim, who's a big Clemson fan, and um, live up in love Lovettsville, Virginia. So, I mean, that's it in a nutshell. Well, I've, you and I have talked about this many times online and offline. I mean, Dabo is is an amazing person, first of all. I mean, it's just without even talking about being a football coach. I've known him since 2003, since he started coaching at Clemson. And was when he got the interim title, I was one of his biggest supporters 2008 at UVA, I was the only former Clemson football player down the sidelines in Charlottesville. And he remembers that. When I went to the 2018 celebration and down in Death Valley, and um, after it was over, I went up to the stage just to say hey to him and just let him know I was there. And I looked up at him and I, was, I go, hey, man. And he looked at me and he goes, he goes, hey, brother. He goes, can you believe this? And I'm like, no. Uh, he goes, this is unbelievable, isn't it? I go, it's truly unbelievable. I said, I was there with you in 2008 in Charlottesville, and I believed in you then. He says, that's right. You were there in Charlottesville. He says, and now we're here. And he says, can you believe this? this is un-. I said, no, it's unbelievable. And, we, you know, I get choked up just thinking about it now, where the program was for a long time, and then where it is now, um, you know, when people talk, put Clemson in the same vein as Alabama and talk about it in the same light. It's, it's credit goes to Dabo and, you know, and a guy like Terry Don Phillips, who saw something special in him, but he's, he's my, he's a friend of mine. Um, it's not like I talk to him daily, but he's a servant leader. And that means he, and servant leader means he encourages growth throughout the program, whether it's players, whether it's admin staff, whether it's other coaches. And, you know, he's not all about being top of the pyramid in a power structure. He he wants to lead by example, and he does lead by example. And he takes great pride in, in his players and his and other coaches growing and achieving things and, 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 and building a whole person. It's just like uh, I called him a couple of years ago. This is 2020, and our daughter, as you know, Larry, swims at the University of Kentucky. And their head coach is a guy named Lars Jorgensen. Lars called me and said, hey, do you think you could get Dabo to do a Zoom call for us? We're going to swim against Tennessee on Friday, and the women have never beaten Tennessee, hasn't beaten Tennessee since 1999. And do you think Dabo will be able to call and give some words of encouragement? I'm like, well, I'll find out. So... Called him, left a message. Within two hours, he called me back. I explained the situation, and he said, I'd love to do it, man. Love you, and I'd love to help the kids. And he did a 45-minute Zoom call on Wednesday during the Clemson football season, mind you, with the Kentucky Swim and Dive team. And then the Kentucky women went out and beat Tennessee for the first time since 1999. And they went on to win the Southeastern Conference last year championship, the women did. And... That's the kind of guy Dabo is, and people don't understand. He, he He's just not in it for himself. He's in it to make – I mean, not even Clemson better. He's in it to make, like, everybody better. It's incredible what he does. So, and the last point I'll make about Dabo is that uh, I went – my Sophie, my youngest, and I went to the Louisville-Clemson game in Louisville in 2019. And after the game, um, stood around to meet some of my friends – uh, you know Chip Winchester, who was uh, who was there when I was there, and and uh, I ran into Reggie Pleasant. You know Reg. Reggie's I played with Reggie at Clemson, and he's now the team chaplain. And we were discussing the state of the program and how great it was. And, and he looked Reggie looked at me right in the eye. He says, "You know what, Billy?" He says, "He says we played for Coach Ford." And I said, "Yep, sure did." And he goes, "The difference between Danny Ford and Dabo Sweeney is." Danny Ford built men and Dabo Sweeney built whole men. I was like, yeah. And I was like, well, 
yeah, I mean, it's a perfect summation of, of Dabo Sweeney. And we just kind of, and yeah, we went our way. But that, that was Reggie, who, you know, we played for both. And he, so that's, that's the difference. And that's what makes Clemson football and the Clemson program different than just about any other college football program in the country. And I'm just proud to even be remotely associated. So that's the state of the program. And, you know, and not to mention they won the national championship in 2016 and 2018, and they won the ACC six years in a row. Last year was a blip on the radar, and I think they're going to be right back in the thick of it again, you know, this year in in 22. I mean, I know this, first of all, I'm going to go NIL with you, right? And, And everybody deserves to be compensated for their fair market value. But these guys are college athletes first and foremost. I, I don't really, I don't understand why people think it's unfair that that they don't receive their just rewards as, as a student athlete at Clemson or at Notre Dame or at the University of Florida or Texas A and M. I mean, these guys are treated. They're given the opportunity to get an education and play in front of hundreds of thousands of people and millions of people on television. Um, you know, how can you offer a high school kid $8 million in the NIL who hasn't even proven himself? He's, he's done nothing. And he, this is just a bidding war between the schools with a lot of money and, and the schools that don't have it. And it's always been that way. I mean, there's always been the haves and have-nots in college football. You and I know that. There's some schools in the country that are never going to win a national championship in football. I'm not going to name them, but you know who they are. And they're, they're always the, the same schools that are always going to be in the position to win a national championship. But this thing is so out of control that it, the Pandora's box has been open. And I don't know if they can ever stuff everything back in the box now. I mean, the NCAA is a completely toothless tiger. I mean, they, they dole out punishments for things that deserve no punishment. And then they let things run wild when it comes to money and boosters. And this stuff's always been going on in college football, but not at the level it is now. You know, it, it, but it's just it's just the world we live in now where I realize 17, 18 year old kid, Larry, you know, 36 months, three years seems like an eternity to them. But, you know, you sign with Clemson or you sign with Georgia and you do your three years. And then if you want to go to the NFL, you can make all the money in the world you could ever dream about making in the NFL. I, I, these guys, you see how they live. You see how the guys live at Clemson. I mean, I went down there in 2017 and took a tour of the Reeves Center. I mean, I literally was laughing out loud about all the amenities they're given. They have chefs and they have masseuses and they have uh, whirlpool treatments and they have and they don't want for anything and they have all the swag you can imagine and they have tutors and they have academic advisors and they make sure they go to class and they they have all these things that they're propped up to receive and yet and yet that's not enough they think you know people somehow and it's not the kids I don't believe there's force in this issue. I think it's the parents and their handlers. A lot of times they're forcing the issue. Now I don't begrudge anybody. I'm, you know, I believe in the free market and all those other things, but there's a time and a place for everything. I mean, as you know, I played in the NFL, but it was a very short amount of time. You know, I signed with Denver out of school for like a, my bonus. I can't even remember. I think it was like a thousand dollars to make, make $65,000 a year. And I got cut by in and I got cut. And I got picked up by the Cardinals, and I was making eighty grand a year. I would have done it for free. I would have played in the NFL, and I would have sold cars in the off season. But I came once again. I came from nothing. I came. I grew up in a nine hundred square foot house. Sometimes we had six other people living in the house. I, you know, I, I, I slept in the dining room for a long time. My dad worked in a grocery store and then was a mailman. And we, so I came from nothing. So money has never motivated me. Um, it's nice to have money, but it's like the jobs I did in the Secret Service or I work for Samaritan's Purse now. I believe if you do the right thing and you work hard, you will eventually get rewarded down the line. But this attitude of it's not fair, people are making money over top of me, I need this, that, and the other, when in reality, 
these kids that are in high school now and they're getting money, these kids in college, like in the NFL, I think 2% of the guys from college make it in the NFL. And, and you know, you're being taken advantage of? Well, let's call it like it is. Do you really think most of these, especially football and basketball players, that are going to Clemson and Georgia and Notre Dame would get in based strictly on their grades? I mean, call it like it is. I mean, you know, like our daughter, she's a 4-0. And she, she works her tail off to swim in the SEC for no apparent reward other than the fact that she loves to compete. And she's not, she's not playing in front of hundreds of thousands of people and millions on television. And so this whole idea of people being taken advantage of is – I don't agree with it. I mean, you know, you can give guys stipends and you know, pay for their laundry and live, let them live comfortably, but – you know, you don't need millions of dollars, and that's going to fracture a delicate locker room situation to begin with. You know, when I was at Clemson, yeah, do we know guys that were getting, driving cars that were nicer than everyone else's? And you kind of figured, hey, you know, the parents probably didn't pay for that. But there was no overt, like, million millionaires out there. And now you've got these guys coming in. They're making more than the pros. So, and then, um, so, you know, to, to backtrack, so I'm, now I'm going to go to the transfer portal, okay? And um, I, if I had to choose between the NIA and the transfer portal, I'd probably go with the transfer portal because, like, in my situation at Clemson, my freshman year, I seriously considered leaving because I was, you know, I wasn't playing that much. I, I returned a few punts and played special teams, and it's not what I was envisioned, and it was not what I was promised. And I was very, I was actually disgruntled. And if the transfer portal existed, I probably would have gone back home more than likely and played baseball at George Mason or James Madison and been done with it. I mean, you know, I, you know that's just being totally honest. Came back the next year and ended up being the backup free safety to Terry Kennard. And then, you know, we won a national championship and the rest is, as you say, is, you know, is history for me. But I think sometimes it's, if you don't have an alternative and you're just, just, you know, you don't think you're going to go anywhere in a situation, you know, sometimes you can just look, I, you know, I would have loved to have the transfer portal when I was the Denver Broncos signed as a free agent and went into tra- training camp. I was like six string, you know, Hey, transfer portal would have been nice, but you can't do that. You got to wait to get cut. We're in college. You just pick up and go. Um, not sure that's the best thing for all athletes. Sometimes like they say, you know, bloom where you're playing it as Dabo says sometimes it's nice to have the alternative but I think what you're doing as a student athlete is you're minimizing what the college experience is all about and you become basically a mercenary and those connections those lifelong connections that I built at Clemson uh, with guys like Bobby Robinson and guys like uh, Allison Dalton and in people like Bob Mahoney and, and people like Bert Henderson, God rest his soul, that I, I made those lifelong connections that if you turn into a mercenary as a student athlete, you're going to lose those things. And you're not going to – I can go back to Clemson right now, and I feel like I'm at home. I pull in where that sign says, welcome to Clemson in season, every season, and I'm home. No matter whether I've been in the Ukraine or whether I've been in sub-Saharan Africa or whether I've been in Mongolia. I feel like I'm at home. And those kids are going to lose that because they've just turned into, like I said, mercenaries. You know? And see, in the NFL, I mean, hey, I just pulled up a stat uh, for this interview. Uh, average NFL career, 3.3 years. 78% of NFL players go broke within three years of retirement. And 15.7% of those filed for bankruptcy within 12 years of leaving the NFL. Now, if you don't have a degree, and if you don't value your education, and you didn't make a lot of money in the NFL, which most guys don't, and most for every Tom Brady, there's a guy like me, you know, that played two games in the NFL, lasted 18 months, and I, I was out on my rear end. You better have the ability to either have that degree or go back and get that degree and I think a lot of times when you burn bridges among people they're not going to welcome you back with open arms so that's just something to think about as those kids you know go through that stuff right you know in 
I could go on and on about this, but I, I, I the NCAA needs to grow a set, and they need to start coming up with a set of rules and regulations that need to be followed and, and not have it as the wild, wild west. Because right now, establishment is totally out of control. There's no adult at the helm leading it. Coaches are trying to put the fires out. But as they're trying to put the fire out, they're also trying to but also trying to build a house at the same time. You can't do both. So, but there's been no direction from the NCAA. They're they're just they're they're basically not there. The people are driving 120 miles an hour on the interstate, and there's no state troopers enforcing the speed limit. That makes sense. It's crazy. All right. Hope you all enjoyed that. The plan is to be back next week with another round of these. And of course, if you want all 30 articles in full, go to TigerIllustrate.com. Appreciate the support of our very loyal sponsors for helping make this happen. Most of all, thanks to all of you for hitting play every week. Really appreciate it. Cheers.